Facebook land, we have an awesome show for you today. We are taking your questions, diving deep on some and real shallow on others. We also have a couple moments today of people getting dunked on. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, June 7th, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, Jay Grizz. Welcome into the show. Heads are bobbing. It's, uh, it's, it's another an, day. It's another day. It's another energetic show. I'm very excited for, uh, for this show. No Mike today. Mike got the, the Rona. But yeah, he is, he's so did over. Mike's whole family. That is true. That and they're true. all they're all doing well. They're all almost through it. I think Mike's pretty much just quarantining at this point. Yep. I think he'll be on the show Thursday remote, Mo- remotely. Yeah, most likely. And then we will be on the road. Oh, that's right. Motown, where Brooks and his gang rule the streets oh, or something oh yeah is detroit rock city is that a thing yeah oh man we're gonna be there brooks just tried to pitch us on as many motown related live show uh topics as possible darn right the quick so. question is what player is is your favorite motown jingle um no it's not no no, no it's not uh but welcome in footclangiveaway.com we're giving away some signed jerseys right now if you want to check that out Going to jump into a quick question here, Mr. Moore. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers as well. Here's the quick question from Instagram. I have the 11th or 12th pick, I assume in a 12-person league. Any strategy or tips for drafting on the turn? We did a mock draft, what, two weeks ago, Brooksy, somewhere around there? Yeah. And I believe Jason was on the turn. And you that had is, a bad time. <laughs> that, that is correct. I, I hate uh, having one of the last picks in most drafts. Uh, it is usually um, not as advantageous as having, you know, one of those first few picks. But someone in every league has it. Every single league, my understanding, except auction, uh, someone has the last and the second to last pick in every uh, round. Let, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the challenges of being at the turn, in my mind, is you're put in a position where you may have to reach more than other players because you are going to have a very long wait until your pick. And so you can get into a little bit of a mind game saying, hey, is this player too early? Like some players, whether it's a, a tight end decision like Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews at the turn, whether it's going wide receiver, wide receiver, but then leaving yourself vulnerable to, you know, 25 picks later getting another running back. Yeah, I mean, I, I one of the good things about being on the turn, I think, is actually the freedom of throwing ADP out the window. Because if you're not used to drafting at one of those spots and you just use it like you do most of your normal drafts where you're like, well... Let me look at who I like. I think this guy will get back to me, so I'm going to take that guy. That guy's never getting back to you. He's never. It's never happening. I mean, obviously, on a long enough, you know, some you're five rounds away from someone's average draft position. Yeah, they'll still be there. But for the most part, you can't decide between two players that you're really between and make the decision to say, I think this one comes back because there's 24 picks between uh, your turn and the next time you're back up. So you just genuinely have to grab the guys that you like. And, and even if you're reaching for someone five, six, seven spots, I, I, you know, like a Mark Andrews. Yeah, exactly. You, you want Mark Andrews, you take him. And, you know, I think a lot of conversation, uh, with the turn starts at that specifically the 12, 13 spot, the end of round one. What do you do there? And you, I just did the mock draft. I took a, a running back and a wide receiver. 
because I do find you felt. Did you feel like you had to? I did in that situation, yes, because whenever you go running back, running back, or you go wide receiver, wide receiver, the your first other position at the end of the third, so your number one wide receiver or your number one running back, whatever you didn't take in those first two rounds, just feels like such trash. So for me, I usually take one of two approaches. I either grab the best running back, best wide receiver available uh, so that I have flexibility for the rest of the draft and I know I've got like a stud in each, or depending on the league, if it's full PPR, especially three wide receiver, this is a spot where I actually do often go zero RB and take a wide receiver, wide receiver, and then I'm not taking a running back even with my third pick. So my number one running back is going to be bad, but I'm doing that strategically. The The theory behind that strategy is that as running backs that were drafted early historically get injured, you know, nobody plays full 17, and running backs that you draft late, they become more valuable as the backups crack the NFL lineups your team gets stronger as the season goes and you have the best wide receiving core quarterback tight end uh you know the the rest of your roster is already strong you just have to hit on a waiver pickup or uh, a late round running back draft pick which can be difficult oh yeah it's and stressful it is not my preferred method i know a lot of people live and die by zero rb that's you know they'll do it from anywhere in the draft and that's the only way they draft not me uh i pretty much only do it when I'm in a running back heavy draft where wide receivers are going and I'm at the end of the first round. I, if if you wait, if you want wide receiver, wide, wide receiver, uh, right now ADP-wise, Zeke does make it there sometimes. Is that true? Yes, that, that can't end be of true. third round. Cam Akers, Etienne, Montgomery, Dobbins. Um, I'm not comfortable with all those guys as my running back one. Obviously, I, I think if Zeke got there, I'd be comfortable. But I don't know if that will. I don't. I don't know if that ADP is going to hold true heading into the season. Yeah, Zeke. In is, fact, I know it won't. Zeke is the most curious case because you've got um, you know, you you got a guy who you just have name fatigue with Zeke. He's been very good for a long time, but he's on a downward trajectory. You know, he's not getting better as he gets older, and so nobody really wants him. But he's still on a good offense, gonna have the ball you know, 300 times and he'll, he'll score enough fantasy points. If I knew Zeke would be there, I'd be fine going wide receiver, wide receiver. But if, tra if Travis Etienne's my running back one that I'm not taking him there. No, or I'm, David I'm Montgomery. going to take a better option at another position. Cam Akers as your running back one could be awesome, or it could be the end of your season. Yeah, that, that that's the problem. And that's a challenge. And really, if you're at one or two, now you get the advantage, obviously of, of grabbing a player to start the draft, but the rest of your decisions are similar in as much as not necessarily following ADP to a T because you're going to be drafting at the turn as well. And you, like you said, there is a freedom there because people do lean on it too heavily, especially if you're a hardcore player. If you're listening now, June 7th. You're hardcore. You, yeah, you're, you're going to be tuned into the ADP and then you're going to go into a draft and we say it every year, like you're going to be surprised. There are going to be players that go that shouldn't and you'll be celebrating because somebody better drops down the list, but then they're going to be players that just take your guy that you wanted in the fourth, they take him in the second, and you're just saying, well, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, the the perfect example between people drafting now and your home leagues that will draft in you know late August, early September, is that right now you've got some smart people drafting Cooper Cup a little early, Justin Jefferson early. When you get around to your home leagues, <laughs> everyone wants them running backs and you're going to be at the end of the first round and you're going to be like oh my gosh is Justin Jefferson going to get to me can I get Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and then at Patrick the 11, Mahomes 12? will go at nine and then you'll you'll get him yeah there you go all right let's talk news news and notes from around the league we haven't talked about this huh Ryan Fitzpatrick retiring oh man that dude's awesome you're a big fan. I'm. Everyone is. Yeah. I mean, if you're not a big fan of Ryan Fitzpatrick, look in the mirror, make a few changes. There's probably, I mean, he'll probably make more money being a commentator than he would 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, he, Go, going and being a backup someplace. I think he's going to be an excellent commentator because he's got a lot of DGAF and he is a fan. He is a genuine love, loves football. You remember the Buffalo game where he's shirtless, screaming just as a fan in the stands. He's he's also got enough. Like, did you know he went to? Um he went, to, oh, yes. he went to Harvard. Did what? You, were you aware of that? I am aware. I have watched <laughs> any football game that he has uh, played in before. <laughs> I can't wait for that to just be brought up during his own broadcast. That'll yes. be great. Yes, I want him to be yeah. the one to bring it up. By the way, I went to Harvard. Every single game, he's got to bring it up once. Um, if I went to Harvard, I would probably bring it up. Favorite uh, <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick memory? Well, I look, the one that's at the top of my mind is probably the same for you, which is the his face mask getting pulled <laughs> the right off of his his head being ripped off and the ball uh, still being completed down yeah. the sideline. Yeah, that's the one. It's a pretty good but play. But, I mean, honestly, there's there's good memories, too, with the Jets and just the one kind of Eric Decker, Brandon Marshall season where, you know, everybody likes a DGAF quarterback. Oh, yeah. I mean, he especially one with emotion. Like, Cutler could have been something, but he was just too lifeless. Yeah, and I guess Winston tries to do that, too. Winston, Winston. But he didn't go to Harvard. No, no. That I think that is the real difference. Is is he is not a Harvard man? Why is it some some quarterbacks are easier to forgive for interceptions than other ones? Like if Ryan Fitzpatrick, because he made so many dumb throws in his career, like stupid drop dead dumb Harvard, not Harvard throws. But when he comes off the field, you're just like ah. You tried. Your, is it because he was always a backup? So it's like. Yes. At least he's out there. One of these two players was drafted with the number one pick in the NFL right. draft and yeah. was supposed to be uh, a superstar, and the other was like just yep. rooted for behind the scenes. Yeah, that's a, and then not, Cutler was never rooted for. So, hey, guess what, Jason? Ah, ah. Jerry Judy left practice with a limp. His groin is bothering him. Uh, my groin. Uh, that is, that is unfortunate, especially considering that we saw. Uh, Judy injured early last year. Um, too early to worry. I'm not going to care at all, but if it continues to linger, I I'll tell you what. When this news broke, I ah. Ah, my groin. Um, also, uh, feel free to uh, check out groinindex.com if you need a list of anybody I'm hearing good things. that uh, has a current groin injury. <laughs> uh, groinindex.com is a real place. Um, but... Uh, my fears and flashbacks uh, to last year to Curtis Samuel, that, like now. Oh, well, like a groin injury? Yeah, just like, just... oh, this shouldn't be a problem. But it's like, well, it shouldn't have been a problem for Curtis Samuel. Yeah, I mean, like you said, too early to worry. I, what I would say is KJ Hamler is looking promising for the season, Mr. Borg Borgignoni. Why not? Spe but speed is there. I mean, everybody wants to make the comps on that team. For uh, Russell Wilson supports two great wide receivers. To me, KJ Hamler is the locket of that offense. Interesting. It's not Sutton. It's not Patrick. It's not uh, Judy. KJ Hamler may surprise. Uh, eventually, it'll take a little while. Uh, Leonard Fournette. It was reported since Leonard Fatnet. Oh come <laughs> on! Got him. See, I guess you can. Take a shot. Uh, seemed to be a little heavy and struggled with some of the heat. This is the kind of reports you're getting right now. Do you care? I mean, he's I, been accused of I don't care levels of apathy with the workout routine, even going back to his Jacksonville days. Yeah, I don't care too much. We do talk about you know how negative news is probably more true than positive news. All the oh, he's in the best shape of his life. Oh, he's ahead of schedule. Oh, he's looking good. Those things are just fluff pieces nonstop. When someone comes out and says that a player is looking a little fat, uh, a little slow, struggling with the heat, it's probably the truth. Now, it's so that early. Wasn't the, that, that's not the quote from the report, seemed to be a little fat. Oh, that's my interpretation of yeah. seemed to be a little heavy. Okay. As a fellow fat boy, <laughs> I feel like I'm allowed to say that. Um, that being <laughs> Jay Grizz as well. Yeah, see, you get it, Jay. Um, does this do anything for uh, Rashad White? Uh, no, I don't care. Rookie running back, drafted, very talented, behind the scenes. I mean, if if, if this quote came from John Brady, then I'll, I'll I care a little bit more. All right, but I think that trust is just too strong right now. Dalton Schultz frustrated by a lack of progress on a long term deal. He had been franchised. Said he's not going to come to the rest of voluntary 
OTAs. Good for you, Dalton. Please don't. Please stay away and get a contract because Dalton Schultz is one of the most we, – we've got a wild card episode coming up in a couple weeks where we're picking like range of outcomes that are very crazy for a player. Dynasty-wise, Dalton Schultz is a wild card. He is so young. He is so important to this offense, and he will be good. It's really hard to not draft him, but then when I look at Dalton Schultz when he signed the franchise, here's the trajectory I have for his career. He plays one year and is very good for the Cowboys. He plays good enough where he hits the free agent market and goes Austin Hooper and signs a big deal for some other team and, and, doesn't, is, and is irrelevant yeah. for fantasy the rest of his career. But if he actually signed a long-term deal with the Cowboys, you're talking about a very valuable piece. So get that deal done because you play this year as a franchise tag player. You're not a Cowboy next year. Doesn't it make him more of a target right now then? Before the deal? Because it's not like he's not going to be on the field. Like, this doesn't end with him sitting out the season. Yeah, that's that's fair. He's going to take his money. He's a, You're he's, saying trade for him in Dynasty? I'm just saying maybe you maybe you target him now because the odds are that something gets done with Dallas. And, and some people and might, worst case, you play this season. Yeah, and some people might interpret this news as, oh, maybe he sits out, and so I've got nothing. So maybe you could trade for him cheap. That's not what the news is. Um, but, yeah, maybe maybe uh, kick the tires. DeAndre Hopkins will be a full go for training camp. And not a full go for the start of the season. Yeah, I'll miss six games. So, But he can play in the preseason, Jason. He's allowed. Well, that's fun. Um, please don't. <laughs> just <laughs> just uh, stay healthy. He was coming off of an MCL uh, surgery. So this is still great news for uh, a good, important fantasy piece because – uh, oftentimes his MCL surgery wasn't brought up because you already knew he was missing six weeks. But if he's already full go for training camp, then great. Traylon Burks dealing with asthma. That is slow <laughs> news day. Oh, man. Uh, Gus Edwards held out of voluntary OTAs, which is the same as Dobbins, right? So both of those guys, there was an init initial report on Dobbins. He's doing some pass catching drills to the side from a jugs machine type of work. But both guys torn ACLs last year within a few days of each other and then not quite ready yet. Dearness Johnson, one-year deal with the Browns. So gets $2.43 million. Still seems likely that he'll be their depth piece behind Nick Chubb yeah, once he, next year comes around. Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, you, you've got Kareem Hunt. No contract negotiations with him ongoing. Uh, he's in the final year of his deal. So Dearness seems like he could uh, take a step up in the future uh, when Kareem Hunt leaves. This isn't a – the 2.43 is um, fully incentives. Uh, I think it's about 700000 in guaranteed uh, money. So it's, it's just nice. It's rewarding a player who was very good when called upon last year. All right. Any other news, Brooks? No, sir. Any other gallbladder-related or asthma-related news? Nothing? No. No groin-related news? No inhalers just, on the ground? I just checked groinindex.com. No updates. By the way, it's Traylon Burks. We learned that this morning. Not Traylon Burks. Not Traylon. It's funny because early in the offseason, we were calling we were always Traylon Burks, yeah. and then we felt like we were doing it wrong because we heard it was Traylon. Yeah, which is not. But According he to Traylon. himself yeah. says it's Traylon Burks. So. Yep. Do -do -do -do. Yeah, just illuminating yeah. things around here. By the way, quick reminder, if you've already got the Ultimate Draft Kit, lots of like bug fixes, little things, uh, updates, upgrades have happened. So if you don't have the newest Android and iOS app, make sure you grab that so that you, uh, you have the newest update with all the fixes in it. And if you don't have the UDK, UltimateDraftKit.com. Yeah, look, look at yourself in the mirror and... Make some changes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick break, and then we'll jump into the mailbag. Now, Mike's absence does leave Ooh. leave a little... Uh, Who's doing the mailbag drop today? I see three deucers. <laughs> oh, Jay Grizz says he doesn't want it. Okay, thanks, Jay. <laughs> Um, that's nice. Any to... volunteers from the the deucers? Oh, I see. I see. I can see all their faces right now. They are so. And they are. They're tried, hiding. Yeah, they, I tried to hide. They do not want this at all. We'll do Thank, it together. Let's you want to do a team effort? Let's go, deucers. Oh, let's do it. 
mailbag. Mailbag. I actually it's not didn't that bad. Hate that that was. I mean, what they lacked in tone, they made up for in volume. Oh, I expected the volume. When the, whenever the three go together, the volume is extreme. Yeah, no, that was good. That was pretty good. Nobody bailed out either. There was a piece of harmony in there. That's yeah, right. I, th- I think we've all accected that we're not going to get close to that high note, and we all just we all level out. Yeah, you just even, phone it in. Yeah, try. exactly. Just, yeah, you I, don't even I got try. no complaints. That was pretty good. Excellent. All right, if you have a question for the show, you can head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button. Can we go back one second? Uh-huh, sure. I believe what happened. I believe what the Foot Clan just witnessed was brilliance from Al Borland. <laughs> you know because what happened. You're right. Al was I wasn't so ready to do terrified. it. <laughs> he was so terrified of being the one called out that he's like, let's just do it together. He, That's I saw smart. His face That's the pretty whole time. smart. Brilliant piece of management back there. You saw right through that, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can also dial the voicemail hotline with a question 302 464 TFFB. We're going to kick it off with a voicemail. Hi, ballers. This is Dan out of Maine. Uh, my question for you is, is there someone from this past year who you kind of forget how good they are until you see them on tape? Like, I thought Hunter Renfro, you forget just how good he is until you watch him play, and then you're reminded. Is, is there anyone that comes into your mind when you hear that question? Uh, thanks. Have a good day. Players, you forget how good they are until you see them play. There's one name that jumps out to me. It happens every single year, maybe because people spend the offseason trying to talk up his backup, but Dalvin Cook. Every single season, you walk into game one and you go, oh, yeah. Like, he's way better than Alexander Madison. Way, 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 way better. Um, the the player for me is a player that is always um, undervalued, which makes sense. Because you don't ever think it's him. You don't think it's his doing. But I actually watched a couple clips recently of Brandon Cooks, and it's like, Dude is really good. That's a good one. He's just always wide freaking open, streaking down the field, catches whatever you throw at him, and and he doesn't get enough credit for just being good at football. It's like, oh, he he just catches a long bomb. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. There's there's some there's reason. no one around him. And uh, DJ Moore, I'll put that out there. Oh, that's nice. Because because I'm gonna give DJ Moore anything I can right now in the off season, since he won't get anything during the season. But I think DJ Moore on film is outstanding. Debo Samuel. Yeah, Debo was a name that came to mind for sure as much as it hurts. Does it? Well, a little bit. It hurts bit. you? It hurts a little bit because... The wound hasn't closed? The uh, the wound is... It's just a scar now. Is so it? Like, it was, oh, okay. You know, it's proof that it happened. Right. Um, but it's it's healed. I You know, I'm, I'd be... I'd love to have some Debo Samuel on my team. But, um, yeah, it's just because... I just didn't believe it, and that that's why. It's like you, you watch, and he, you just don't think he can constantly keep breaking all the tackles. As you say, that's a, that's a big scar because he twisted the knife right. week after week. That's, that's right. The uh, handle eventually got all the way in. Is there there's some handle in yeah, there? Yeah. <laughs> Twitter question from Football Guy. When are podcasts three times a week? Great question. I thought they started in June. Well, they do start in June, actually in January, for anyone who is a supporter at jointhefoot.com. We do our foot cast every Thursday. Uh, however, our main show, the one you're listening to right now, goes three times a week in July, and then five times in August all the way through the end of the NFL season. I used to say through December, but now mm, we've no. got more weeks. So The, the NFL soon will – basically, Foot Clan, it's going to be five days a week. <laughs> Year round in about three more years. Oh boy! Oh boy! Instagram question from Matt Dane: Terry McLaurin or Mike Williams in a dynasty league? McLaurin is twenty six point uh, seven years old. Big Mike twenty seven point seven. This one is not close for me. It is not close for me, and I'm sure we're on the same. Yeah, side. it's Mike Williams. Hundred percent. You're attached to a top three quarterback, top five quarterback in the NFL, and you're paid. And you're paid. Now, I expect Terry McLaurin to get the bag this offseason. So by the time, uh, you know, dynasty startup drafts are happening late September, I, I, think Ter- I think both of these guys will have long-term contracts. But as of right now, Mike Williams has one, and Terry McLaurin does not. You do a lot of dynasty startup drafts late September? That, yeah, there's plenty. 
That, 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 wait, late September? Is that That's what, what I said? That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you were doubling down. No, I, I, you're, you're a big week three, week four guy. <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were pointing out like, you know, a lot of Dynasty goes on like now. I thought I was I was learning something new. I'm like, is that no. when the Dynasty startups happen? No, okay. That's fair. That's fair. Late, <laughs> late August, August, early September. Right, I'm in on that. All yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Uh, there is a follow-up on Mike Williams for Dynasty. Is this right now peak value for Mike Williams? Mm -mm. I don't think so either. I don't think so. I mean, all three of us independently statted him as the wide receiver one, the redraft player that you would rather have over Keenan Allen, um, which I think is a little spicy, right? Keenan Allen's always a top 15 wide receiver. He's great. He's going to lead the team in targets. Um, but Mike Williams type of target and ability in the red zone is so much higher that Mike Williams to me is is the wide receiver that I want from this team and I want receivers from Big Herb. Let me look back. I'm, I'm, I wanted to look at the Des Bryant touchdown totals from 2012 to 2014, 12, 13, and 16. 1,300 yards, 1,200 yards, 1,300 yards. I don't know if Mike Williams can quite hit those levels, but it's within the range of outcomes for, for Mike Williams. If he's the number one target, uh, especially maybe you know a year from now. So I think peak value potential, yeah, it could go up. Yeah, I mean, last year, five games inside, he was a top 10 wide receiver five different times. He has certainly boom bust. Uh, yeah, he needs consistency. He, he can he can disappear because of the the type of game that he has. Uh, that being said, one of the things that I always try to remember is that outside of the absolute tip top, and I mean like top three, not not like all wide receiver ones, like outside of uh, you know Diggs and Cooper Cup, and I don't even know if there's anyone else anymore. All wide receivers, well Jefferson, um, all wide receivers are very inconsistent. They all, even the great ones, have a a handful of really disappear games so worry more about the peak than the valleys with wide receivers and Mike Williams peak is awesome yeah you know his consistency on our website's at 52.9 percent that's a b that's a b that's a percentage of games exceeding 10 and a half points so he's a little more boom bust than you'd like but he also has the boom I mean not every wide receiver has the boom if if you're if you're do you have the boom Oh, I get, I got the boom. Um, if your kid brought home a report card, yeah, straight bees. Oh, I'd be thrilled. I'm thrilled. Oh yeah. yeah, good job. They're not going to Harvard. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, but that means they can get drafted number one overall. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, Instagram question from Brian Baconator. You're gonna like this one, Jason. Baconator or bacon hater? No, bacon hater. Okay, like I accept. the. Uh, yep. No, that's fine. I was worried. Yeah, you would have turned the question down. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> How'd you get into playing pickleball? Oh, great question. I told you you'd like it. Um, It was Papa Skids. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. From Andy. years ago, before it was cool. Yeah, when it was really just for all the old people. Now uh, young people are like, oh, man, I could do this. Uh, pickleball is awesome. And pickle is life and get into it. Yeah, we, we played it um, off and on. Definitely off in the summer times. Let me put it this way. Tennis is awesome, but you have to be in great shape to play tennis. You can't just walk in and, and play and, and be, you know, and then start getting better. So do pickleball. <laughs> Forget the shape. Uh, any shape will do. No, uh, it's it's fun. It's a good time. We're, we we used wanna... to be flag football players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> we, aged, we aged out. And then we aged out. Uh, hey, what, Andy, yes. uh, do you want to play pickleball later today? Yes. All right. Let's, let's, let's do, do that. that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Instagram question from Chefster Mike. Oh, that's my nickname on the pickleball court. Chef Jason. Just Chef so Jason. You know. Yeah. Cause I'm always in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Illegally. Uh, what do you think is the ceiling for JK Dobbins this year? Right now he's our consensus running back 20. So give me a, a singular number. The ceiling for JK Dobbins this year is the running back back six i'm not that high i i'd say 10 sure and and uh, i completely understand that I, I i think his ceiling is definitely top 10 he's on a run first offense that could be the offense that leads the entire nfl in rushing yards rushing touchdowns he's the dude we saw him in his rookie year 
the back half of that be a top 10 fantasy running back already. Um, obviously, terrible injury coming back, and usually it takes a little bit of time. So it's not perfect. He doesn't catch passes. If we're just talking ceiling, though, ceiling is he gets 12, 13 touchdowns, has enough involvement in the passing game, you know, 35 receptions or so, and he's just oh boy. a really, really talented uh, running back. I would have said I would have agreed with you heading into last year, before the injury. That so you that think, RB six would have been right, been more realistic. I do think that there there's a requirement here, coming off of this injury, multiple players coming off of it, to distribute the load. I don't think you're going to see the level of work that Dobbins would have received last year this year. So. That's why I'd move his ceiling back a little bit. I, I think you're probably right um, as as far as what his uh, probable outcome is. His probable outcome is not to have, you know, a massive workload that will allow him to reach that peak. Okay, here we go. Instagram from Matt says, in a three wide receiver league, do you increase the value of wide receivers and by how much? Yes, by three. <laughs> I just wanted to give it like a you know a, a very hmm. easy number, and so now now it's an easy answer. You know you, re, you increase it. By I'm, I'm pretty confused. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, what in in three wide receiver leagues, uh, the value of wide receivers goes way up, <clears throat> and the reason why is because of your flex position. I presume that in your three wide receiver, you still have a flex, and if you have a flex, that means that you've got basically. Um, so many more players, so many more players that have to be rostered, have to go into your starting lineup. And when you get down that far, wide receivers outscore running backs. They just do. And so you have more depth issues, more injury, uh, changes that you're going to need by week players. Can we talk about this? Yeah, let's talk. I thought I, I was pretty sure that's what we were no, doing. No, no, we hadn't started yet. Okay, um, let's start. <clears throat> I so I always I, I struggle with this question. Philosophically, obviously, if you have a three wide receiver league, you have to play more wide receivers. Mm -hmm. But there are so many more wide receivers; they are so much easier to pick up off of the waiver wire. Play matchups. I mean, we have a long history of finding, you know, the ran. I mean, the Travis Fulgums of the world surge into relevance for three or four week spans just based on injuries and things like that. Obviously, in these leagues, you also have the exact same level of scarcity at the running back position mm -hmm. where just because there's more wide receivers that you have to start doesn't mean that those running back positions aren't still very valuable. So I guess I always, I never know exactly where to draw that line. And I don't know if it's as healthy for my team to go into the draft thinking I need more wide receivers is my point. I, I think that when you look at your roster at the end of your startup draft and you know, usually in let's say it's a, a two wide receiver, two running back, and a flex league. I want my bench, depending on how many it is, to be fifty fifty running back wide receiver or heavy on the on the running back side. Um that's that just flips for me in a three wide receiver league. I will I just want more options for matchups. You know, if if you know you're probably starting four wide receivers, then you just it's just simple math. You have to have more options more matchups um and more depth there so it it's you know at the top of the draft does it change how you would treat the uh the turn when we had yeah. that, that quick question earlier in the in the game um yeah i think the first you know six seven eight nine picks it it doesn't really have an effect i'm going to take the the better running backs there but if you have to start three wide receivers that means that if you were to go wide receiver wide receiver at the turn and you have two of the best, you have a larger positional advantage because your next wide receiver you grab is going to be pretty much your, – that's your final starter, and you're just going to be way better than everybody there. When, you, when you're when you in that league and you compare yourself to the person that grabbed Christian McCaffrey at the 102, and then they come back and at the end of the second they grab Mike Evans or something, if you go running back wide receiver – you're just basically at a disadvantage to that team. You you now have the same positions as that other team, but they're not as powerful. Well, if you go wide receiver, wide receiver, you have an advantage over that team. You just 
now have to, you know, it, it's a different strategy. My only two devil's advocate thoughts would be one, if everybody goes into the draft with that mentality, better running backs drop down the list a little bit. Or or maybe you have an opportunity to get a difference maker there. And two, I just plain feel way more confident drafting an eighth-round wide receiver that I think can contribute to my team than I do picking up a, a James Cook or run, depth piece running back that I think might show up. Yeah, I mean, So some of it is just um, confidence in my own drafting abilities – for those positions. It is funny. Um, people are genuinely good at certain scouting and bad at others. I mean, we you, you, you have enough like um, evidence over years where it's like people in your own league, you know the guy that's like, man, he always nails the, the wide receiver. You know, it's like he just always gets the right breakout wide receiver. Every single year he kind of uh, pegs that player. And so Andy, you know what you are better or worse at drafting historically, or at least how confident you feel in that. And that's part of when you're at the draft, making those decisions. If you're good at getting middle tier wide receivers year after year after year, well then load up at running backs in the beginning and then stack your lineup with a bunch of middle round wide receivers. Instagram. I, I also like, uh, regardless of which direction you go, I like being in a draft where I don't feel like I've accidentally handcuffed myself with positional dip, like requirements. So whenever I try to balance a draft, I just like that freedom later on. Um, as opposed to, let's say you go wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, like you are, you got to have some gall to take a fourth wide receiver at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a question, really important one, Jason. Instagram from Kellen, how do you guys keep your voices so silky smooth after the UDK videos? Oh, they, well, one, they don't start, Silky smooth. No. Um, they're made. He they're, said honey. Yeah. Honey is how. Honey smooth. is how bears do it. Yeah. For sure. Uh, we make our voices silky smooth because of those videos. Those videos, our voice. Oh, those are the workouts? Prior to those videos is horrendous. Yeah. It's just like. Ah, Smoker level? My voice sounds like. And then once we do 100 videos, <laughs> this is what you get. The end result is beautiful yeah and then you start doing all the drops for us and everything uh instagram question from c griffin 864 why not take cmc number one why not um well the answer is injury uh history um uh, on the uh, on our profile video of christian mccaffrey i basically said i think if you're not a coward you should take cmc number one i and i said i am a coward right i, I two of us have him number one so this is the right crew to ask why not to. I will say this, like in the ultimate draft kit, one of the interesting components to the auction values for these players is the auction values factor in risk. So even though two thirds of us have Christian McCaffrey at number one over Jonathan Taylor, Jonathan Taylor has a higher auction value in those rankings because of the risk aversion and how you're distributing your budget. Yeah, I mean, on a on a on the field basis, Christian McCaffrey is the best. Um, he'll score more than everybody. At least he has over the last several years. And there is no real reason. There truly is no real reason to think that Christian McCaffrey will get injured again based upon the injuries he's had in the past. But. Should it happen, which it could happen to anyone, it could happen to Jonathan Taylor, should it happen, it will feel so obvious and like you are such a dumb dumb. Yes. And you will, I mean, I, I can't do it I, because I've had it. Right. I've had Christian McCaffrey uh, yeah, parts of the too. last two years. Yeah. I think if I haven't experienced the last two years, like if I'm someone that just didn't have the pleasure of having Christian McCaffrey on my team, I'd be like all in on him this year because... Kyle, read that stat out loud. He's played 10 games last two years, and seven were in the top six. Yeah, I mean, he is a game breaker. Two of those games, he didn't score a touchdown. Um, Let me ask you a question here, Jason. Do you believe his, his value changes if they are the team that gets Baker Mayfield? Yeah, yeah, I think his value is I, – I, I think the offense is – significantly better with Baker Mayfield than with Sam Darnold. Okay. More touchdown upside. I mean, if you if you tell me 
does Baker get double digit rushing rushing touchdowns with Sam Darnold or with Baker? It would be with Baker, not only um because more scoring opportunities, but Darnold actually will run touchdowns in around the goal line far more than Baker does. Here's a question from Alex on Instagram. Best fantasy football or sorry, biggest fantasy football argument the three of you have been in. My, Debo's the one that comes to mind for me. I mean, genuinely, like we, we had an off the air argument and Andy has boom shakalaka me on that one. Um, can it's you, one of the very rare times we've had one of those. Too. It's the it's the only one that comes to my mind. Can yeah. you think of? Well, look, I I took it as leagues, and I do have one with Mike. Oh, which okay. is what what better day to bring it up yeah. than when Mike isn't here to defend Dunk himself? Dunk on him, but he has nothing to defend himself with. I mean, there's no defense <laughs> for what he did. But I mean, years and years ago, ironically, at a flag football game, I had told him that I was close. Like I disclosed. With a disclaimer, like I said at the beginning, I go, hey, I'm going to tell you this information, but this is in confidence. Oh, and I, can you believe he did this? I and can't. I told him, I said, hey, I'm closing in on a deal for Calvin Johnson. Like it's, it's at the 11th, you know, it's, it's about to happen. I just need to, you know, I'm massaging this. I'm talking to this other manager in the league. This is at flag football where we're teammates. Yeah. You we, know, just yeah. like. And friends then, even. Friends even. Uh, formerly. And then I go home, and lo and behold, what pops through my inbox? A trade has been accepted. A trade has been accepted, and Mike, the fantasy hitman, right, has traded for Calvin Johnson oh. in the league. Oh, man, that's brutal. I didn't know if we would ever speak again. I can't believe that we're on a show together. Um, after something like that. I can't believe just hours of therapy. That's like, that's like, that's a cold hearted betrayal. Get that person out of your league type of move. I was so, so mad. I get it. I was so mad. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, <laughs> no, <laughs> Mike learned that a there's very a line valuable, uh, that a very <laughs> no i'm saying that a very valuable player was willing to be parted with by their manager and he went and he got the job done that was it was cold-blooded he did it, well, let me ask you this did he win the championship that year i don't think so i don't think so either so okay if he had it I, been honestly acceptable. i think that that was that was half of why we're still friends is that the trade didn't work out to give him a great advantage the way it looked like it was going to but yeah obviously that's why he's not here today Mm -hmm. I brought that back up. It's the we, anniversary. It's, <laughs> every every year we can't be in the we we can't spend any time together on no, that day. June seventh is a <laughs> day we don't talk about. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up here for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you for joining us, ultimatedraftkit.com. If you want to spend some more time doing some fantasy football research today, check out those silky smooth videos. Goodbye, Jason. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.